Hi guys, I'm Shelley Becker and I studied Natural Sciences at Corpus Christi College, Cambridge. Welcome to Simply Cambridge, where I'll be answering the smaller, simpler questions all about the University of Cambridge. You can expect a new question every Sunday, Wednesday and Friday. Follow me on Instagram and Snapchat to keep up with me and keep watching this video to keep up with Cambridge. So in today's video, we're going to be exploring the collegiate system at Cambridge and the differences between colleges. The University of Cambridge is comprised of 31 different colleges that together make up the collegiate system. So when you apply to the university, you won't be applying to the university in general, but you'll be applying to a specific college. So does it matter what college you apply to? In short, kind of yes and kind of no. No matter what college you go to, it is still the University of Cambridge. But there are differences between colleges. So in this video, we're going to go over some of the differences between the Cambridge colleges. So I'm gonna split this video up into six sections. Size, the location, the architecture, the admissions process, bursaries, and finally, about the diversity. So let's begin with size. This is an obvious difference. Some colleges are much larger than others. This means that the population of students varies greatly between colleges. So if you're someone that wants to form part of a tight-knit community where there aren't many students, but everyone knows each other, you might want to consider applying to a smaller college. However, if you're the type of person that likes to see new faces all the time, then you might want to consider one of the larger colleges. Some examples are Trinity, which is one of the well-known big colleges and has a current student population of 1,030 students. An example on the other extreme is Corpus Christi College, which is a quite well-known small college, which only has about 460 students. So if we define a college to either be small, medium or large, here is the list of colleges that you could possibly be applying to. The second difference we're going to be talking about is the location of colleges. So some colleges are considered to be central colleges, which means they're quite close to the city centre. You might want to consider applying to a college that's going to be close to the department you're going to be spending a lot of time in. There are some colleges which are quite far out, which means you're probably going to have to purchase a bike to get to your lectures in time. Some colleges can conveniently be found near the city centre, which makes it very unlikely that it's going to be far away from any department. Most departments kind of surround the city centre. So I luckily went to Corpus Christi College, which is kind of smack bang in the city centre, and it meant that the the chemistry department was only a 5-10 minute walk for me. Had I gone to a further away college like Homerton, it would have more like been a 30 minute walk. So if we define a college to either be central or peripheral, here are the list of colleges that you could be applying to. So the next consideration we're going to make is architecture. And if you're the type of person that kind of minds the aesthetic of your surrounding, you might want to take a look at different colleges maybe via Google Images or even visiting Cambridge in person. So a lot of people liken Cambridge to Harry Potter and having lived at Corpus Christi College for three years I can say it definitely does feel like you're kind of living in a castle. So some colleges have more of an older castly feel to them. For example Corpus Christi and King's College. Some colleges have more of a modern feel to them such as Churchill and Robinson and then there are some colleges which have a red brick sort of look such as St Catharines. If you are someone who really does appreciate the beauty in your surroundings uh, and you have a particular type of style that you consider to be beautiful, I would definitely say it's worth at least googling the college you're going to be applying to, just so you know what it looks like because you might have an idea that you really want to be in a Harry Potter sort of surrounding and you apply to Robinson and you're in a department looking building. So definitely I would say it's worth at least googling it and even if you can visit it in person. So the next consideration we're going to make is the admission process and this for me is one of the really key important ones. So like I say, you apply to any single college and you're still applying to the University of Cambridge. But not every college has exactly the same admission process. Some colleges may have more interviews, some colleges may have fewer. Some colleges may have additional written tests, some colleges don't. So you can really, really sort of strategize and use this to your advantage. If you know you're someone who really tests well on paper, you might want to apply to a college that has further written admission tests. If you're someone like me who doesn't want the extra stress on top of your A-level, 
then you're gonna apply to a college that doesn't make you sit additional examinations. So for example, if you're applying to natural sciences at Mangadel or at Trinity, then you will be expected to do a written assessment on the day of your interview. So that's another test to worry about. That's something that I wouldn't be interested in and thus I wouldn't apply to a place like Trinity or Mangadel. So that's in comparison to applying to a place like Corpus or St. Catharines where you wouldn't have to sit that same entrance exam even though you're applying for the same course at the same university. So I definitely feel this is something to really pay attention to and do some more research on. More information about what each specific admission processes per college can be found on the college's website so I'm gonna link a website down below which has links to different college websites so I would really look through the how to apply section which is usually where they kind of divulge their admission process so for example I'm gonna show you what it looks like for Corpus Christi College if you apply to different courses so here you can see that for some courses you have to do some assessments, for some you don't. So this is just Corpus Christi. This is the kind of research I want you to do for every single college. So do make sure you check out the link below so that you're well informed about what to expect of the admission process before you're thrown in the deep end. So the next thing we're gonna be looking at is bursaries and just grants and prize and awards in general. So different colleges kind of vary in their wealth and this means there is a variation in the extent to which a college can subsidize its students or just help its students out financially in general. So if you form part of a richer college, like say St. John's or Trinity, you might be able to expect that they're able to subsidize you a bit more, meaning that your rooms might be cheaper. Or you might be able to expect that if you're in financial difficulty that they're able to do a little bit more than a college who doesn't have as much funds as they do. For every single Cambridge student, there is something called the Cambridge Bursary. This is applicable to you if your total household income is below £42,620 per year. So if this is you, then you'll be entitled to a sum of up to £3,500 per year given to you as a bursary by Cambridge. This means you're not going to have to pay it back and it is not a loan. This is just to kind of help you out because Cambridge don't want you to be put off the application simply because you feel like you might not be able to afford it. In addition to this is where the differences come in. So this is where it varies from college to college. So every college has its sort of own prizing system, award system and grant system. So this varies greatly between colleges and you'll really have to look at the individual college websites to see the differences. It's quite a common thing for Cambridge colleges to award you on your academic excellence and performance and these are usually referred to as prizes. The value of the prizes kind of again correlates well with the wealth of a college. This whole concept extends to the grants you may receive but it's kind of hard to summarize that all onto one page so what you're really going to have to do is if you have a college that you're interested in you're going to have to visit that college specific website via the link down below and look at what kind of grants scholarships, awards and prizes are available. So the last difference that we're going to touch on is diversity. Colleges can vary greatly in diversity racial diversity, gender diversity, age, and so on and so forth. So if you're looking to form part of a very specific mix, for example, you wanna be amongst a very racially diverse college, I would definitely encourage you to take your time to do some more research and to make sure that this is the place you do wanna live for three years, because it is quite a big commitment and you will be spending quite a lot of time. Some colleges are mature colleges and mature colleges are defined as colleges which admit students who at the time of admission are at the age of 21 or over. So if you are at the age of 21 and you want to be part of a college that doesn't really have teenagers in it because you just feel like you want to be in a more mature surrounding, then definitely consider mature colleges. Some colleges are women's only. That's kind of a self-defined concept. So if you want to be part of a college where you're only surrounded by women, which has its advantages, for example, from speaking through friends, I found that uh, people at women's only colleges kind of liked the concept of not having to maintain any sort of image and kind of feeling free in who they were, being able to walk around in their pajamas and so on. If that's the kind of vibe that you're going for, then there are women colleges available. But if we think about racial diversity for a second, it may be the case that some colleges are more racially diverse than others. This one's a bit tricky because it's hard to get my hands on the statistics per college, on the racial demographics per college. I can get that as a whole for Cambridge, but it's quite hard to find the breakdown for every individual college. 
But if we think for a moment and we look at the breakdown of different ethnicities that have applied and have been admitted to Cambridge in the year of 2014, which is when I joined the University of Cambridge, we can see that there were only a total of 35 black people that were admitted in the year that I was. If we think about averages for a second, the average is about one black person per college. Thinking about the fact that I know for a fact that there was more than one black person at certain colleges, it meant that there are some colleges at Cambridge in the year of 2014 which had zero black people. So I can definitely say without even necessarily having a breakdown per college that some colleges must then for a fact to be more racially diverse than others. You might wanna somehow research it. I don't know what you could necessarily do because I personally couldn't find any breakdown of statistics, but perhaps you'd want to visit Cambridge, like I said, in person, which I think is the most sensible option or route to take. In my year group at Corpus Christi College, I think there were two people who were black and one person who was of mixed race. And so if someone, a prospective student, walked into Corpus, they would see those students, which might not sound like a lot, but then they might walk into another college which has none at all and that might encourage them to apply to Corpus. So that's what I mean by really consider it being an option that you come and visit Cambridge and you kind of gather a sense of the colleges yourself. So I hope that was really useful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and make sure to turn on your notifications and I will see you on Sunday. Bye.